Дамы и господа, к синему ринга приглашаются Хосе Натаро! Navarro from the United States, son of Mexican immigrants, one of 11 children, South Central LA, and a former Olympian in the flyweight class. Also a 1999 Pan Am silver medalist. He's a southpaw. Two losses, both in Japan. He's had his title cracks, as Al mentioned, and failed. Now he's got another one, this vacant super flyweight title up for grabs here in Moscow. Into the lights and on stage here in Moscow, Dmitry Kirillov from St. Petersburg, now training uh, mostly uh, Wildcard Jim, Freddie Roach here in Moscow as well. He will be in Kirillov's corner. Kirillov coming off a disappointing, questionable loss for Luis Perez 17 months ago. He was disgusted with the decision down on boxing. Very disputed. Speaking of down, he's been down three times since the beginning of his career. Each time in his three losses, but he is a technically solid, exciting fighter with a versatile attack. And it's rare that you have a 17-month layoff that's not because of managerial issues or injuries, simply because it just set you back. A, a very yeah. tough loss like that, but many believe that this young man could be destined to win a title. And the same has been said of Jose Navarro, so this is an interesting matchup. It really is. Crossroads. They fought for the title and failed. Now it's time, Dmitry Kirillov. Lost his shot at the IBF title to Luis Perez, as we said, 17 months ago. Now that title is vacant and it could be his. Ladies and gentlemen from Moscow, Russia, at this time we proudly present a world title attraction brought to you in association with Gotham Boxing and Gabella Entertainment and it is sanctioned by the IBF. At this time we present our referee in charge of this bout, the third man in the ring, Samuel Virouette. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing dark blue trunks with light blue trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, California in the United States. He weighed in at 113 and three quarter pounds with a record of 26 wins, two losses. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making his third attempt at a world title. Please welcome the IBF number three ranked world contender, introducing Jose Navarro. Президент на титул чемпиона мира по версии IBF. Ему 26 лет. Его рост 169 сантиметров и вес 51,65 килограмма. Его профессиональный рекорд 28 боев. 
26 побед, 2 поражения, 12 побед нокаутом. Из Лос-Анджелеса, Калифорния, США, Хосе Across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with red and white trim, hailing from St. Petersburg, Russia. He weighed in at 114 and three quarter pounds with a record of 28 wins, three losses. He has 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the IBF number four ranked super flyweight world contender, introducing Dimitri Baby. И слева меня в красном уринге президент победу чемпиона АБФ. Ему 28 лет, его рост 160 сантиметров и вес 52 килограмма. Его профессиональный рекорд 31 бой, 28 побед, 3 поражения, 10 побед нокаутом. Счастлив представить вам из Санкт-Петербурга, Россия, Дмитрий Малыш And we look, Taylor, the tape here. Well, 44 is wrong. We know that uh, Navarro is 26, so he definitely, he definitely, if, he, if he's old, he fights young. We know that, Al. But we should say that Kirillov at 28 now. Uh, and the advantage uh, for Navarro is to maybe keep this fight at a distance, use that superior reach. Got a height and reach on uh, Kirillov, and that'll be important. Both these men know what it's like to go to a foreign land and lose. They both lost to the same man, Masamori Takayama, in Japan uh, for the WBC Super Flyweight title uh, at different times. And uh, uh, it's tough to go on the road and win a title in the fall. This is the third time he's doing it. Uh, he also lost a very, very controversial decision in Japan to Katsushiki. Kawashima, and he, uh, uh, that one he that definitely, that one he definitely felt he could have won. One judge hit at 120 to 109 for him, yeah, and the right. other two judges scored it against him. Right, there was, uh, one, yeah, one judge had it uh, 12 rounds to nothing, so how lopsided is that? Huh? Question, that's boxing sometime. We see uh, Dmitry Kirillov in the Russian colors of red, blue, and white, and uh, the southpaw coming out aggressive, Jose Navarro, as promised. He said he would do that, and he could do that behind his jab. Very solid jab, always tough for a for an orthodox fighter to deal with now for a variety of reasons, right? Yeah, and you know, the last time out, Kirillov did fight a lefty also, Luis Perez, but Perez is a whole different kind of left-hander. He squares himself up. He's a more readily available target. Jose Navarro, infinitely better defensively and gives you much more of a traditional lefty look. Big difference, but uh, Perez did put Kirillov down with that right hook, so. Yeah, the difference, though, is Perez punches with more power than Navarro. No doubt about it. Navarro definitely boxer puncher. Watch that straight right hand. He's been effective with the uh, with the right hook. He's had his moments with the right uppercut once he's inside, but he definitely wants to work off that jab and then go down the middle with that left if he can. So Kirillov very quick as well. He's he's versatile, Al. He could fight inside like that and then fights quick. He's outside again. Both these men are very good technicians, good hands. We see evidence of it already here in round number one. Against Perez, Kriloff was able to land the straight right hand a lot. I doubt that it'll land as much against Navarro, but he wants to get in there from time to time. What's going on with that drop left hand of Kriloff? Really low. And that invites that jab, and Navarro now tries to work off the jab, and then from the outside, go with an uppercut. Be dangerous. A very good balance on both guys. Nobody overcommitting. Excellent boxing on both sides there. That tail end shot from Navarro landed. So a good first round for the American. Yeah, Navarro having a good, very good first round. And we can already see in this first round, it's not a, a surprise or a mystery why these two men are rated so highly in the super flyweight division. They're both just excellent boxers. There's that right by Kirillov. When he lands it, it's a very good punch. There's Kirillov, really good head movement. 
Freddie Roach feels his man's got the superior hand speed. We'll see. Gets hit there on the way in. Leaning. Nothing real clean. Close. Good first round. Football. Uh, told me he loves to travel. He sure has. He had to chase uh, Manny Pacquiao back to the Philippines <laughs> so he could come back and beat Barrera into retirement. And now he's here uh, saying that, you know, he had a lot of sparring uh, in Wild Card Gym. Uh, uh, did uh, Dimitri Kirill off? In fact, he sparred him. Jose Navarro and Roach told us he held it was a standoff. They sparred a lot. Okay. Put the other side, put the right here, and you come back at the hook, okay? He's wide open for that shot, okay? Yeah. Right. Now you keep that. All right, well. Okay. Freddie Roach, uh, certainly one of the hottest trainers. Really, about every two or three years, whether it's a Tommy Brooks or a Buddy McGirt or a Freddie Roach, or somebody that has a, or has a series of fighters that are great. In Freddie Roach's case right now, he's, he's got a lot of fighters that are doing a great job. He was one himself. He's very hot. That doesn't always translate, of course, whether it's baseball managers or fight trainers. And Freddie's a calming influence. You know, he works best with fighters who are self-motivated uh, and will respond to a certain kind of gentle prodding that is very uh, specific and meticulous. You mean like James Tony? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the kind of guy. <laughs> Combination there right now, uh, Kirillov. Uh, they want him, they really want that left hook, right hand, that right hand left hook. So, Kirillov not abandoning the jab against the lefty, but uh, see if he can get that combination going. Barrow not biting. Barrow with that stiff jab, and that will force Kirillov to restart. And you know, these these fights, these super flyweight fights where many punches are thrown, you have to really pay attention if you're judging. Round one, a perfect example. I thought, like you, I believe, Navarro won that round. But Dmitry Kirillov had his moments in that round. So those are exactly the kind of rounds at the end of a fight make up the entire tapestry. Well, it's hard as talking to a judge, and you know, sometimes you got to break them down, these rounds, into who won the first minute, who won the second, who won the third. That's one good way to do it. Now the Russian audience wants Kirillov to step it up. He's very cautious, not able to land those combinations. He's hesitant to fire. There's a hook, but he didn't follow with the right hand. And the hook came from a long way. And the ball quickly moved away from him. The ball short with the jab several times. So try to dial in the right range to pick off uh, Kirillov in the pass. Already blood from the nose of Dmitry Kirillov. Uh, and, you know, Navarro, very sharp early in this fight. This is, he's a good fighter anyway, but this is as sharp as he can be. Yeah, a jab, and then the occasional straight left hand. And now I like his body work, too. He's landed to the body before. Here comes Kirillov with the head of steam. Now he was inside, and he tried that right hand. You've got to slip a little bit more. Don't loop that left hand. Just really fire it straight. There, there's that uppercut inside. So Navarro working extremely well from the outside, but having his moments inside, and there's that body shot. So he's just touching, 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 but forcing Kirillov to restart. One of the things both these fighters have in common is they both have a, some awkward moments there. They both have a complete arsenal, whether it's jabs, hooks, uppercuts, straight lefts, and in the case of uh, Kirillov or right, they have every punch. They do. As Kirillov tries a little head movement here, but not firing any shots there on the tail end with that left. He sinks into the ribs of Navarro. There's a good left hook from Kirillov, Kirillov, but not enough perhaps to take this one. Give last 10 seconds, Come on. Better round, okay? You, you gotta keep that right hand up, son. You understand? We don't want this guy to swallow up. Man. Just keep the right hand up. Now, the left hand to the body stop the end, Joe, but do not drop your right hand throwing it, okay? All right, beautiful. Hey, just one more round of warm up, and again, do not, when you, when you feel that punch is going around your neck, you have to duck underneath that and get out of there. You hear me? Okay, okay, let me get some water. Classic. Good advice from Frank with her. Keep his right okay, hand up please. with Navarro's left eye swelling already. Yeah, that was a 
Alright. Joe, hit the right body shot now, okay? Not, not so much up with this right body shot. Rivera wants him also to go to the body a little bit more, but let's see if he keeps that hand up, get that jab back as a guard. Now he's doing it early, Navarro. Navarro on the left, the southpaw, trying to hook and then jab. Follow the hook with the jab, the opposite as you think. Conventional perspective. You know, Kirillov, uh, you mentioned Luis Perez uh, knocked, uh, or the, against Luis Perez, he uh, used a, uh, or pressing him with the double right hook, excuse me. Navarro has a good right hook, but it's not quite as good as Perez. And for Kirillov, his version of that is the double left hook against Navarro, and he needs to throw it to the body and the head. Uh, we'll see if that happens. And maybe try to shorten up through that quick lead right hand. And there he did as they continue to turn. So a very strategic, tactical, entertaining fight here because both guys mounting spurts of offense. They have a lot of holding here. Sammy Vera hasn't had to break him up at all. These are two very, very good boxer puncher types, and they're throwing nice punches. They really are. And Navarro it is getting there a lot with that uppercut. I think those are the punches that have created the, the uh, blood in the nose of Dimitri Kirillov. Yeah, he's done very little wrong. Uh, the only thing, and now he's corrected that, he's, he's guard. He's got that right-hand guard up, but he's not jabbing with it. It's back protecting the right side of his face. Key to this fight is, if you look at the footwork, Navarro's right foot, look how it's on the outside of um, uh, of Dmitry Kirillov. You don't, if you're Kirillov, you want to get your left foot on the outside of the right foot of Navarro. That's why those uppercuts and straight lefts are getting in by Navarro. And should uh, Kirillov be moving low, that right hand. That's a knockdown. And Sammy Virouette calls off. Kirillov, so that short right hand, he didn't try to wind up, the way out. And Navarro got surprised on the turn, so it was a short right from Kirillov. You got it? No more. Sammy Virouette uh, yep. wisely instructing, yep. don't hit, uh, that's a muscle, the muscle him down, that's not a knockdown, but Virouette takes control here. Do not hit when your man's down. That's, you could be disqualified for that. And, you know, I don't think Navarro was hurt by that punch, but it did knock him down. Yeah, and stunned. stunned a little and it knocked him off balance. Yeah. yeah. And um, now, Navarro, you can tell, he wants to come back strong yeah, to exactly. show he wasn't hurt. See the advice, we elect not to stay away, turning into a bruising uh, super flyweight battle. Jose Navarro from the United States, back to the screen. He's on the left, the southpaw. And Dmitry Kirillov from St. Petersburg, Russia, looked behind early in the fight, but put Navarro on the floor in this round. <laughs> Navarro batted himself clearly. We got dropped. Okay, that's a 10-8 round, you understand? We got to be back smart the next round. You come back and win that next round, and then you're going to be fine. We'll just win a couple more rounds, okay? Joe, don't stand straight up after the combination. Well, we talked about the Kirillov right hand against Perez. It landed often in a round that Navarro otherwise really dominated. And look, he just barely touched the glove. Now, part of that problem is Sammy Virouet. He has himself to blame for that. He didn't get in between those fighters quickly enough. And Kirillov landed some more punches. Here we see there's the right hand. Now he goes down. Now, of course, he's trying to get him out, and Kirillov's still throwing that right. You could, And then just after that, when Navarro became the aggressor, down went um, Kirillov, but it clearly was not a knockdown. A lot of drama in that round. Among the dr part of the drama, you could make that a 10-9 round for uh, Kirillov because most of the rest of the round was controlled by Navarro. And good play apart. Both men, uh, they've been 12, they know how to fight, and they, it is very well could go the distance, but a knockdown already. I think the other drama, Al, is how does Navarro respond here? You know, his corner said, hey, you got to win this round, you got to come back and get even.
even you're down 10, you were down 10 8 there, they're saying, and you probably are in that round. But, you know, where's his mental focus on? Where is his head? He was clearly surprised and mad that he went, that he hit the canvas. Well, let me tell you, this fight's changed. Four times already, Kirillov has landed big right hands right in this hand. round. So he's found a home for that punch, and until or unless Jose Navarro stops him from throwing it, he might get knocked down again. Well, how does he stop it? He's got to be moving away the, the other way, right? So it's a matter of uh, movement as well, moving to, to his right. Move to his right, keep his left hand up, and don't square himself up to Kirillov. That's why he's getting hit with the... Uh, look, he's uh, squaring himself up, and he's stepping to his left. And, and the bar is being hit with those right hands. Yeah, Kirillov walked into a little shot there, but I love the way Kirillov just shortens up that right. He's got it right cocked, really loaded, little 16... 20 inch punch. Not trying to fire it from his shoulder. There. He's quick with that right hand. Krilov can get that punch in against anybody. Good body work from uh, Navarro. Started the jab and then went to the left of the body, but that straight right not landing anymore for Navarro. He's got to start boxing. Losing this round, Al, as you clear, clearly pointed out, those right hands for Kirillov damaging. There's a good left from Navarro. Navarro turning, 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 and moving to his right away from that right hand of Kirillov. And Dimitri slipping punch is much better now than he was in the first two rounds. Uh, this is a critical fight for both, obviously, with the title on the line. Failed title attempts from both men. A real action-packed division. I love this division. Oh, it's, a, it's a great division. Navarro making a little mini comeback here in round number four. Is it enough to get him back into the chance to win this round? 30 seconds to go in this fourth schedule for 12, of course, with the title on the line. Nice left hand, another left left. Just drives Kirillov back, makes him restart, but Kirillov trying to press forward here. Look, he's nobody punching there, and now whoever gets the best of it, the exchange inside. Those will be the key who wins some of these exchanges. They both have pretty good hand speed, Al. Kirillov, or Navarro has won the last minute of the round, but Kirillov won the first two minutes. Oh, there's a good left from uh, Navarro. Okay, nice deep breath. Okay, so one more. Okay, okay Zimu, now here. You're moving into his right hand too much. If you move to your left, you move to your left and get the foot outside, go the right hand to the body, left hook to the outside of his right hand. Right now you're walking into it too much, okay? Now we need to get a little busier, a little more combinations, okay? The right hand, that was a double right hand by Kirillov. Almost nobody can throw a punch that quick to land a double right hand like that. He just does it. And there again, he splits the defense of Jose Navarro. Now that one, he kind of lunged in, but he's fast. And when you're fast, you can get it done. Now, in the last minute of the round, Jose Navarro did very well, and that straight left hand was part of that renaissance he had toward the end of the last round. Yeah, I like Freddie Roche's uh, instruction to Kirillov. As offensive as he was, he made mistakes, and uh, by running into that left hand, perhaps, so they would, uh, Roche wants Kirillov to, to move away from, from uh, Navarro's big left hand. Not, I wouldn't say big left hand, but certainly his power mm -hmm. punch. So it is that type of uh, strategic fight, each guy trying to move the guy that, you know, in the direction they want him to go. And there are two good straight lefts by Navarro, and he, he stunned Dimitri Krilov with that. Yeah, he's putting his punches together now. Krilov not holding on, but being driven back a little bit. And wanting to bite, 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 but uh, Navarro just waiting. There was Navarro on the inside throwing the uppercut. Remember in rounds one and two how often he used that punch? He got away from it. Yeah. And he's used it already twice now here in round number five. He's been very effective. He had a wonderful performance with uh, Bernie uh, Torres uh, uh, earlier uh, last year, I should say, with that right uppercut. He really found a home with it. And now a tail end left hand by Navarro. He's getting very busy here at Kirillov. Can't get reckless here. He's trying to force the fight a little bit. And there's a cut over the right eye of Navarro, and he's saying it came from a clash of heads. Well, it's an elbow that Sammy Virat just uh, warned uh, warned uh, uh, Kirillov about. 
so it could have been that, Al. I'm not sure. I didn't see it. And if it was, and it would stop, make this fight have to be halted, they would go to the scorecards at this juncture. Very close fight, Al. Navarro's been down that 10-8 round. Absolutely crucial if that were to be the case. Kirillov, nice right hand, not able to follow up in there. The last uh, shot of the exchange, Navarro. Very important to win rounds that way and press judges. You're the last guy, first guy or last guy punching in these exchanges and Navarro's been very busy. Good hand speed out of him. He's had a very good round. Kirillov's got some things done as well, but Navarro has been a little sharper in this round. Very good round here. Inside a minute to go in the fifth. This is a very, very good fight. Well fought and interesting and at times exciting. Yeah, well, as you said, touchdown out in the beginning. These guys know how to fight. World contenders fighting for a title for good reason. You know, they both had their opportunities. They're both good guys. You almost hate to think of anyone losing this fight because they're just both good young men who are skilled and both deserve to be champions at some point in their career. Yeah, if this fight dials on this way and goes 12 this close, I don't think, you know, we talk about crossroads. Uh, the, this, the, the loser does not become the op an opponent. From oh, here on absolutely end. not. Too much ability here. The girl heard uh, that eye seems to be bothering him a little bit, the right eye. He flicked at a nice left down the middle from Navarro. Good round for Jose Navarro for the most part. Okay, don't worry, Joe. All right, hey, Joe. Larry's going to take care of the so don't think about that. The way you're going to win this fight now is by out-hustling him, but you must out-hustle him with sharp punches that land. When you go for the body, Joe... Here's where we believe the cut may have been created. Well, it's hard... Yeah, I think it was. Um, and a warning by Sammy Giruet. Oh, yeah, it's a clash of heads. Definitely a clash of heads. And, in fact, Kirillov was kind of pulling him toward him. I don't think it was deliberate, but there's no question that was a clash of heads, and we believe it was so noted. Seconds out. And then toward the end of the round, uh, right hand there. A little, uh, very much an urgent call in the corner of Jose Navarro. You gotta outbox him, you gotta throw more punches, you can't get hit so much. Frank Rivera saying, don't worry about the cut, the cut man will handle that. Focus on this fight and what you gotta do, you gotta outbox Guerrero. And it really comes down to, again, uh, a couple points to me, you know, who's got more power, but who's got who's the faster guy, too, who can land in these exchanges. Well, this, this fight has a lot of ebbs and flows. Now, this round, here we're in a round where now it's reverted back. So far, three times, Kirillov has landed a big right hand already. So now he's back to doing what he did well. The bar off standing and fighting a little bit, not moving as much. Let's stop it, okay? Let's stop it. Joe, he's there for the counter right. Uh, they want to uh, count right out of uh, Navarro. They feel that uh, Kirillov is leaving himself open. One punch has not emerged in this fight. It's not Navarro's strong suit. It's the right hook. He just hasn't been able to throw that uh, like Luis Perez was against uh, Kirillov. But, uh, there he goes finally uh, jabbing again and trying to take the play. He's content to sort of wait and move the counter for a while. He's got to take the momentum back, Al. You're right. There's Kirillov with that hook to the body. That punch has been in long balls for a couple of rounds. I have this fight dead even at this point. Wow. I, I think it's a, it's, it's a very, very close fight. Well, how did you have the knockdown round? I made a 10-8, but, but uh, I had the first two rounds for Navarro, and then a 10-8 and 10-9 round for uh, Kirillov, and then a round for uh, Navarro. Now, here is what Navarro has to do, box more. He's got to get busier. Bring that jab out there and come back with that left hand. They still feel Kirillov open for a counter left hand. I don't see it right now. It hasn't been coming through. Then the ball trying to put that left there. Kirillov's right hand is low at times. There when he fires and now winning the exchanges. So Kirillov, the Russian looked like the stronger guy there, Alan. The Great trader. combination punching by Dmitry Kirillov. He is an excellent combination puncher. And in this round, his straight right again is becoming a major factor. He looked like the stronger guy in the inside game. Now, 
Now here comes the crowd. Yeah. That's great two-way action here. Hope you're enjoying it from Moscow. Our main event to come, Sultan Abragamov defends his WBO heavyweight title against Vander Holofield. He's trying to make more history. Good one here, though. Co-feature, Dmitry Kirillov, Kirillov, the Russian against the American, Jose Navarro. Good combination from Kirillov. And he followed up, too, Navarro with a head of steam. Solid round from the Russian here in Moscow. Okay, down here. This guy can't fight going backwards now. When you let him come to you, when you let him come to you, he, he's got a pretty good one too, right? When you back him up, he can't fight. Right? Use your face, your jab, and take it left. Like every time you back him up, he gets that step in. You have him, okay? All right, make him go back him, right? If you fight with him, easy. Back him up, keep it up. Get this together. Uh, think about the title, think about your familia, okay? All right, look. Hey, don't get away from the jab once in a while, right? And Joe, don't let him measure you, okay? Knock that fucking punch down and come back with something. No, I got it, I got it. Don't worry. Hey, put that. Go. Yeah, well, still a close fight, obviously. Time to start biting down even more. Navarro's uh, corner again. That urgency, you can just feel it and hear it. Well, we're past the halfway point in this in this match, and uh, it is a match that has had ebb and flow, not only in round by round, but really minute by minute. These two fighters, excellent fighters in a division that has great fighters in it, like Christian Mahares, who might be the best, Fernando Montiel, yeah, and uh, Martin Castillo, terrific fighter, Nobu Nashira. There's just a lot of good fighters in this division that can make great matchups like this one. Yeah, right hand from Chirilov, and that got Navarro's ire up as he fired off a combination. Chirilov trying to do a little head feint. That left hand's low, though. But Navarro didn't take the play there. He started to put shots together. If he could streamline that jab, get that jab pumping in that uh, left hand, it'd be dangerous. But he's got to up the offensive output, Navarro, because Kirillov was slightly busier. You know, as you sit here and watch this fight, there's another right hand by Kirillov. The difference is Kirillov probably can hurt Navarro more than Navarro can hurt him. Well, that comes down to the power game. Yeah, the little bit of power, and I think speed as well, Al. I think it's those two components. Who gets the edge in that? These exchanges are just so key. And both men getting a lot of work done. Good body work by Kirillov with his left hook, but now the straight left hand of Navarro is working again. Exchanges are close. Yeah, they really are. Both men are landing. There's that uppercut again by Navarro, which uh, has been effective. Uh, he might be getting a bell here a minute early. We don't know. But, yeah, the judge tapped the uh, brigade, the 10-second warning. is about to ring the bell next to me. We talked him out of it, Al. <laughs> We're here to serve and protect, just like the police department. Navarro's having a pretty good round here. He's been a little sharper with his punches, a little more active. It's a close round. Huh? Yeah, but it's very close. Kirillov, that right hand, a little short right hand, didn't land there, but he's, again, doing a good job. Of not trying to swim for the fences with it. You're right, Al, that left hook might could be the difference. He hasn't thrown it too much. Now he's moving left into, potentially, Navarro's wheelhouse. There's that straight right hand. He just wants to get in position by moving left that way. I'd like to see a little head feint from him, perhaps, and then fire that right. Maybe fake the little feint to the left and uh, get the ball to fight. Now we're closing in the end of seven. That's as close a round as you're likely to see. There's the Russian flag, and they are here to see their national hero, one of many uh, of the former Soviet Union to win heavyweight championships. This is the man, dressing room live, Sultan Ibragamov, the Russian.
Russian who beat the American Shannon Briggs to win the WBO championship. Now he'll have to not only get by to up his profile, get by Evander Holyfield, perhaps send the legend into retirement. So big pressure. He talked to this morning at breakfast saying, everybody wants a piece of me. And even though he's an hour and a half plane ride from Moscow, uh, the Russians love him here. He said there's more distraction here. It's more difficult to focus here than it would be anywhere else. This is a big moment though. Well, Briggs was by all means. Uh, he's got the title now, but... Very important tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, raise that profile. Everybody will hear of him if he beats Evander Holyfield. Straight left hand begins this round for Jose Navarro as he lands it. Trying something different. Trying the uppercut followed by the left over the top. Now, who's the stronger guy here? Well, you know, I think Krylov is probably overall the stronger puncher by just a little bit, but just by a little bit, but um, he's never really hurt Navarro badly. He did knock him down and stunned him momentarily. But it's, it's such a good matchup, and then with the speed game, it's hard to separate. You know, and yeah, Navarro has the slight speed edge. It's very, very tough, and Krylov is a very quick fighter as well. He so. is. And both men come at you with a, a variety of punches. Yeah, and a punch and move and flurry and get out, too. And that's why you want to see the little guys fight. They fight with a lot of courage and guts, but they're on the move all the time. Here, one of the few clinches sent me Vero at. We're off at 29 and Navarro at 26. Uh, it's stages in their career where they really want to get that title. Yeah, it's hard to fight into your 30s effectively when you're throwing so many shots on oh, hell in these type of in these divisions. This round, the least active of all the rounds in the fight. And still, there have been very good punches, John. Oh, there's a little left hand from Navarro, but look at the left hand low by Kirillov. Dangerous, now we're going to a flurry here, but he's still open. He's open for a, for a left hand, but we haven't seen the hook from Navarro. Jose Navarro's landing some nice straight left hands. He's just not a power punch out. I, I still would love to see a hook. Yeah, he's just, the right hook has not been it, there for him. Because Kirillov is open there. Good exchange. There's the straight left effective from Navarro. That was a better punch. That at least got a rise out of Dmitry Kirillov. Again, a very close round. I might have Navarro with a very slight edge, but you can make a strong case for Kirillov in this round wow. as well. Well, the judges from uh, the United States, Russia, two from the United States, or two from the United States, one from Russia. Yeah, Navarro now taking it up a little bit, boxing effect. He's been more active in this round, and that's probably the difference. And he's keeping his left hand up and not getting hit with so many right hands by Gorilla. Yeah, there he got hit with a left. How many times have, has Evander Holyfield had this in a heavy duty bonanza of a fight? High profile as they come, another title fight. And again, he talked about all of that focus. You see it. He has no excuses physically. He said, Basically, I've got to prove that I'm not an old 44-year-old man, but I know I'm not. 22 times he has gotten ready for a championship match like this. And you know, I don't want to read too much into this. The demeanor of Evander Holyfield, much different than we normally see before title fights. He's normally yeah. smiling more. Sometimes he's even singing. This then, is a very stone-faced yeah. Holyfield. Yeah, well, I, I believe focused as well. I, I, I honestly do. And one thing he does focus every minute of a fight. And we'll see if physically, though, he's over those ailments that he said really prohibited 
prohibited him uh, offensively. Shoulder injuries. The likes of Chris Bird, James Tony, just couldn't get his hands on him. Box. Shoulder injuries. He's had two shoulder surgeries and says it helped him. Nice right hand by Corey Love. He's got that turn. back. Yep. Yeah, on the turn. They're really both trying to move the way they want to move. Well, they're both moving into each other's power, actually. Well, that right hand, though, has been the, 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 the better weapon. So uh, Navarro moving away from him. So he's having things his way. Right? It, it's simple. It's Kirilov's turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it, Navarro had a couple of good rounds. Now it's Kirilov's turn to have a good round. That's the way it goes. Look at Kirilov without punching, controlling the action there. That was, that was some nice feigning as he rolled under shots but didn't put anything back offensively. A rare body shot by Jose Navarro. Look at his eye swelling now. Right eye. Now remember. It's not going to affect him. It looks out for now. But he's, he's rubbing at it now. But it's not below the eye, so it's not causing any uh, vision. And he shouldn't lose this fight based on that because that was the result of a clash of heads. So no matter what, he could lose it on the scorecards, but he shouldn't lose it by TKO because of that. Right. Now Kirillov opening up. You know, you're starting to get the feeling, just for the moment anyway, because it could change at any time. But Kirillov he feels he can't walk through Navarro, but he's definitely the stronger guy, and he wants to rumble with him a little bit. Well, he came out with conviction. He, I thought Grilov last lost the last two rounds, and I think he may feel like there was concern about that. So he knew he had to try and take control again. Hands up! Don't leave your hands out. Come on, work. Come back with something, Joey. Navarro warned for holding. Navarro with that double left hand now down the middle with the left. Kirillov inside, but not doing anything. So his left hand is low again, but Navarro not able to pull or are unwilling to pull the trigger. There's a little faint. There's a little swelling on the right eye of um, Kirillov as well. It's closing a bit. It's not as noticeable, but it's there nonetheless. Well, underneath is more of an issue than uh, on the eyebrow of Navarro. So it can't feel good, but you got to fight through the pain at this point. you got a title on the line and three rounds to go. You know, early in the round, Kirillov dominated. Now, Navarro coming back in the latter part of this round. Right. I was getting the feeling that the Kirillov was starting to put some power shots together, but he has backed off a little bit, and you got to like Navarro's aggression. Making for another close round. What else is new? Instructions in the corners. Uh, it's How you feel, Joe? How you feel? All right, look. Son. Dimitri Kurilov had a very good beginning to the last round. Landing good counter right hands like that one. Navarro lunging a little bit, and now there's the defense of Kirillov slipping as uh, Navarro missed, I don't know if Navarro's missed five straight punches in this fight, so that was a good demonstration of excellent defense by Kirillov. Then again, the countering by Kirillov, even though Navarro came back well in the last minute, and there's, uh, again, the countering work by Dmitry Kirillov, and uh, so Navarro, who had a few good moments like that one toward the last minute, Probably lost the round because of the beginning career left had. You know, neither guy with a huge knockout record, it doesn't mean you can't be strong. There are two strong yep. super flyweights. Uh, I'm not saying the strongest by any means, but uh, Kirillov had only 10 knockouts in his 31 fights. And uh, Navarro with a dozen in his 28. Get something, find something, Joe. But look what they, you know, one clash of heads caused that headbutt, but there's swelling for other reasons, and they're called punches on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you know, we're heading into round 11 here, and, uh, uh, or, or, excuse me, you're round 10. I have this fight dead even uh, at this juncture. Well, because of the 10-8, then. 10-8 round, so. round, again, the borough has been down, so after two, I thought, and we both thought, uh, very impressive rounds, and the borough got dropped, surprised, not stunned, I used the word stunned at first, not really stunned or had his world rock, but very surprised and angry about it. He's regrouped nicely and won a lot of rounds on your card, Al. 
You see, has nice left hook by uh, Kirillov, but again, the ebb and flow in this part of this first round, it's Navarro who came out and established the left hand. I, I've seldom seen a fight with as many changing tides as this one. I mean, in a long time. And that's why, uh, you know, really with the scoring, again, breaking the round down into yep. three-minute chunks, or, you know, one-minute chunks each. You give a, the first minute to somebody, the second maybe to somebody else, and then you conclude on the third. It might make it a little easier. But, man, this is hellish trying to score this fight. It really is. Good left hook by Kreloff, and another good oh, left hook. So that's the weapon. I think could get some of the job done here that we haven't seen from Kirillov. And that right hook, so I think the hooks, I'd mm -hmm. uh, like to see more of them because I, I think Kirillov is open for one as well. Well, both men could, re right, you're right, both men could be using that punch a little more. And uh, Kirillov used it very effectively against Perez in their fight. Again, another lefty. And the advantage that uh, Navarro had early in this round dissipated a little bit now by Kirillov's good work. Absolutely. Now Navarro keeping Kirillov off with that jab. There's that straight left hand up the middle for the ball. Kirillov trying to solve the puzzle. He's inside, not doing anything. Feigning his way. There's that hook. And that's a belt line blow, but he buried that hook to the kidney of the bar. Again, I feel that hook could be the effective punch. Good, straight right hand for Kirillov as he starts to, well, not really push the bar back. It didn't discourage the bar. It got him mad. It was an excellent fight. If you like boxing at all, you have to like this fight. This is the kind of stuff, I mean, technically these guys are so sound, Al. Championship rounds. Hi. Yeah, two rounds to go, son. Hi. You gotta put it on this guy. Okay? So early in that round. He's gonna put it on this guy. With that left hook we talked game about, game. he landed three or four. Superb left hooks during the course of this round, and there's yet another one. That one actually looked like it staggered Navarro momentarily, and then there was a borderline shot that Grilov got a warning for. Keep backing him up, okay? Yeah. We need this round, man. Let's go. You're going to win this championship tonight. You got to get it the old-fashioned way. You got to earn it. You said it, and you know what? The understatement from both corners. We need this round. But Freddie Roach getting a little—not I wouldn't say aggravated because he's the kind of calm guy that never does. But saying, you know, you got to take more control here. You got to be the stronger, tougher guy. You got to push this guy back. And this is the championship rounds, and it's sitting there waiting for either guy. He's got to take it. It's there for the taking. The WBO Super Flyweight, uh, or the IBF uh, Super Flyweight Championship on the line here in Moscow. Dmitry Kirillov from Russia in the Russian colors and in the blue from the United States. Jose Navarro, the left-hander. So both guys pick it up again. The pace has been excellent in this fight. You know, these guys have combined for only 13 knockouts in their 54 wins. This doesn't They're, matter, does it? It doesn't. They're not big punchers. They're they might not knock, get knocked out either of them tonight. But you know what? They're throwing some solid punches yeah. and landing some solid punches. Navarro's been on the deck in the third, but he has, again, shaken that off nicely. Again, the judges, two from the United States, one from Russia. Great right hand there by Kirillov a moment ago. Yeah, Kirillov shortening up at that right. And the ball trying to create a little bit of distance. I still say Kirillov is the slightly harder puncher. And, and in a way he's demonstrated that tonight. Trying to push the ball back. There's that hand, right hand, ready to unload. Big hooks and right. Yeah, the hooks and a follow up right. That's what they wanted all night. Left hand, right hook, right, uh, right cross. There's the right. Now Navarro could be hurt. No, he's coming out winging, trying to back up by some space. He's holding on a little bit. He really could be a little shaken by that flurry. And 
here Kirillov. Now the power seems to be taking over as he starts to drive the ball into his own corner. And the American's in trouble. He's not holding on here with a minute to go. And Kirillov really turning on the Jets here in Moscow. And Nick, you called it. It's the left hook that has really turned this fight around for Kirillov. Oh, he's definitely looking for more powerful guy here. And he's got time to close it, Al. What should Navarro be doing? He's, do he's holding, which he should be doing, and trying to give him lateral movement and hanging on. He's got to get through this round, obviously. It's a big round for Dmitry Kirillov, but he wants to prevent it from being for sure a 10-8 round with an exactly, knockdown. Yeah. Any chance it could be a 10-8 without the Well, it could be. A judge could score it that way. Yeah, he's dominated it. Follow up right from Kirillov. Now he wants to get tough in the trenches. And he'll slug with Navarro. He just feels he's the more powerful puncher. And as we close out the 11th, it's hard to disagree after that scintillating performance from the Russian. One round to go here in Moscow for the IBF Super Flyweight Championship of the World. There's the hook to the body by Kirillov. A double left hook. What did we say he should throw? And what did you say he should throw? A double left hook. And that's what Kirillov did. And it was very, very effective. The same combination he used against Luis Perez so well. You go out there, so you do just this. You put it on, you put him on his ass one more time. One champion. Yo, do not let this fucking knock you out. You understand me? You gotta box him, you gotta win weight, and when you get eight time up, put your head to one side of your shoulder. Two time up with your head forward. This is your title, son. This is your title. It's gonna be somebody's title after this three minutes. It's been furious action at times here. Never really a moment of, uh, I would call it a dull fight. This is, this is exciting, Al. It really is, and you know, Dmitry Krylov had showed he had a lot to tank in the last round, and those hooks to the body and the head opened up big right hands, and it was just a, a very good tactical move for Krylov to unload that punch. Yeah, Navarro's in trouble now. I mean, how, what's he going to do? I'll box the guy at this stage, uh, unless it's absolutely a paper-thin lead. Uh, well, and, and it could be. I have Krylov ahead by two points in this fight. It's conceivable somebody could have it closer. However, you're right. If, if the Navarro needs a knockdown or a knockout, he could have a problem. Yeah, he's in a position, perhaps, of, uh, to not be able to win the title because of that. Now, Kirillov opening up with a, with a combination, but he's really picking his spots, and Navarro's allowing him to. He's got to be a little, uh, I wouldn't say either guy's gas, but it's got to be somewhat exhausting here for 12 rounds. There's a combination, and Kirillov continues to throw shots. Some land, some don't, but he's, he's uh, distributing the punishment here in the 12. This fight has changed in the last two, three rounds, really, two and a half rounds, because Kirillov is landing big power punches, and for the first time, stunning Navarro. And there again is the left hook by Kirillov. It's been evident in the last several rounds, and it's been the, the thing that changed the complexion of this fight. Yeah, you know, as much as you sometimes say, what would happen in a 15-round fight like the old days? Wow, here comes the ball. 12 rounds will be a definitive uh, yeah. answer. We'll really get our answer here. I mean, these, both these guys have really let it all go. And here comes rapid-fire combination as Kirilla hangs in there, takes shots to give more. And then Navarro lands big shots afterwards. I think ultimately the difference is, as you pointed out, Kirillov hits a little harder. Now a cut around the left eye of Kirillov. That's not going to stop him, is it, Al? Uh, this is inside a minute. You have to take your hat off to both these young men. I mean, this is just a superb fight. Well, they know what's at stake. They've both failed in title bids before. And again, that belts for the taking here tonight in Moscow. The American trying to open up, and uh, the Russian climbs all over him. Anybody that loses tonight, please don't call them anything but what they are, the top contender in this division. Nice right hand by uh, Navarro in what has been a fairly close 12th round. Now well, we'll see it finish here. Two tough hombres going for the Super Flyweight Championship. Ah, oh, Kirillov. 
big finish. Not a definitive 12th round rule. I would give it to the Russian. Game as they come, talented as they come. Dmitry Kirillov wows the crowd here in Russia. Jose uh, uh, Navarro down in the third round, boxed very effectively, was able to hang in there and slug with Kirillov, but not quite able to match him in terms of power. You see the effects on his face now. And of course, that cut came from a clash of heads, which is a tough break for Navarro. Had to affect him a little bit. You know, had to hurt too. Well. Sure. Kirillov was able to land the combinations early in this round. The right hand, yeah, he throws the hook and the straight right. The left hook became a very formidable and important weapon for him in the last three rounds of this fight, three or four rounds really. And they had some great exchange in that round. First Kirillov, and then here comes Navarro back, landing a good right hook, a straight left hand, and then a little right uppercut. And this is where the cut will happen. Now that may have been from a clash of heads as well. If the cut happened right there, it was from a clash of heads. Yes, it was. Absolutely. So he, in his case though, the cut comes very late in the fight, and that's a significant difference. Yeah, 15 rounds through the grind, and there's no downtime. Oh. Yeah, 12 very tough rounds for these yeah, two. It's a rugged, rugged fight. That's why you love the little guys. Well, you know, they, they both, we mentioned they've had failed attempts at a title. For Jose Navarro, who I think senses that maybe he let this slip away in those last few rounds, his third time on foreign soil, going all the way in a close decision. Yeah, twice in Japan, here in Russia. We'll see the one who lost, where we are, and who has the title now. Jimmy Lennon Jr. has the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Joe Pasquale, scores about 116 to 112. Pasquale, 116, 112, Kirillov. And judges at ringside, Dr. Nikolai Puchkov and Glenn Trowbridge both scored about 114 to 113 in favor of the winner and new champion, Dmitry in any language, it was clear who won that. Look at the body language of Dmitry Kirillov. He's a title champion anymore. We'll hear it in Russian now. Dmitry You know, Al, you were right on. 114-113 by two judges. So it really came down to the knockdown. That, yeah, that and I think those last few rounds that uh, Dmitry Kirillov fought very well in. Had he not closed the show like he did, Nick, very likely would have lost the decision. And, and I thought it was a very close fight, a one or two, yeah. maybe three-point fight. You can get to 161-12, I guess, but uh, look at this. A uh, 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 wonderful show of respect and regard for two fine contenders for a title. Only one could bring it home. That's a picture that speaks 